Wayne McIsaac is an amateur archaeologist living in St. Andrews in the Codroy Valley. He has been researching Viking history since he was 18 years old, and he believes he has discovered an extensive site in St. Andrews. McIsaac says that this proves Vikings did indeed settle on the west coast of Newfoundland. That that might be part of. I, I think what's right here in St. Andrews is uh, Thorf and Carl Sefney's colony. And what I've got there is uh, a long mound um, and several square mounds, various sizes. But uh, what makes me think it's the colony is, is not just the land features, it's the, the parallels to the Norse sagas. My ideas come from, uh, from a pretty close reading of five or six different translations of the sagas, um, and also the actual geographical features that correspond to the saga. In the sagas they say that, uh, that the second colony, or the colony, the actual colony, was uh, at the end of the mountains they'd seen further north. They described that it was by a freshwater salmon river that flowed through a saltwater lake and through a gap in a sandbar. That's all down here. Like, all, all of those details are there. McIsaac previously contacted the Newfoundland Archaeology Department, but after bringing archaeologists to view his findings, he did not get the results he had hoped for. Or... No, I had no idea. As a matter of fact, I had kind of been shot down on this about six years ago. Um, I had contacted them. They sent a guy out. He was actually going down to see the Dorset site down at uh, Cape Ray. And he came out and he was on his way, dropped in. I took him down there. He looked at everything. He went to that mound and he dug uh, test holes along it, three or four test holes. The, the test holes came up uh, with charcoal mixed through from top to bottom and what I thought when I saw that was this was burnt over and then mounded up but what he said was this is a natural formation and I was thinking to myself at the time natural formation wouldn't that be in layers like if there was charcoal wouldn't it have been in a layer natural formations happen over a long period of time but anyway no he said that was that and then I, I took him out and I showed him there was one mound, a perfectly square mound, about the size of this house here. And I thought, okay, well, this is what I got to show him. And he looked at it and said, oh, that's an old potato cellar. And I was like, an old potato cellar. In the back of my mind, I was thinking, who in the name of God would come up here to store their potatoes? They must have been really valuable because they would have been very well hidden up here, miles from the nearest house. Uh, and he said, look, I'll show you some nails. And he dug into the corner. No nails, he said, well, it's still an old potato cellar. And as he was leaving, he said, don't do any digging here. There's nothing here, but don't dig here. So this is what I think is uh, the remains of the defensive wall. It runs up over that ridge, that hill there, and it originally went right out to the edge of the bank overlooking the river, and it goes along this way. In historical times that we know of anyway, uh, there was never any construction of any kind up here. Uh, it's a pretty straight wall. It looks like a lot of work went into it. I don't think it's a natural phenomenon. And it's in the right place, as far as uh, what I think anyway. But yeah, it seems to me to be pretty much like uh, some of the other fortifications that have been found in Europe. Like this, this the dimensions of it, like the size. I can only just imagine what it would have looked like a thousand years ago. Now, I, I'm always, I keep saying this is what it is, because I'm not an archaeologist. An archaeologist has to say, it may have been this. Archaeologists have to be skeptical. I am not under that constraint. This is a Norse defensive wall.